Welcome to the University of Rhode Island's field video on ERT or electrical resistivity tomography. This is a geophysical technique we can use to scan the invisible, meaning we can see underground. It helps us map lithology, groundwater, and areas of high or low conductivity, such as saltwater intrusion and water table delineation. In this project, it is mainly used to identify saltwater and freshwater mixing zones underground, which helps us map areas of saltwater intrusion. When choosing a survey site, there's a few things to keep in mind. We have to be away from the roadway, power lines, and not interfere with foot traffic. ERT requires a long extension cord-like cable that should be kept as straight as possible during a survey, so our site needs to cover a large area of uninterrupted space. So, for the main equipment we will need for a survey, at least two 12-volt deep cycle marine batteries, the ERT setup including Super Sting machine, a box of 56 electrodes and connectors, the main cables and connectors that come with the Super Sting, and cat litter. Be sure to bring other things like water, food, buckets, a canopy for sun protection, and a laptop for downloading data later on. Safety is important at any field site. Don't forget gloves, long pants, closed-toed shoes, and a safety vest. Now that we're ready and have a site selected, we can begin measuring our land. Depending on your site, you must determine how far apart the electrode spacing should be. They are spaced at 5 meters directly on the cable, but you can do less depending on the length of your site. Once this is determined, the electrode should be placed at each interval, and our cables unrolled along the parallel. Consult your super sting manual on which end of the cable is male or female. It's important to know before unraveling, as the ends need to be compatible when connecting to the machine. Now that our electrodes are placed, it's time to make them stationary and connect them to the cable. When digging holes to place electrodes in, depending on your site, you may need to add salt water and cat litter. Cat litter has a high clay content that holds moisture and enforces connection of electrodes. Mix cat litter with salt water in a bucket for a paste-like formula to add in the holes for electrodes. Be sure to make the holes narrow and deep for better contact with the earth. We then hammer the electrodes into the ground so that only about an inch sticks out, just enough to see the connector. If contact resistivity issues persist later on, it can typically be solved through the addition of more cat litter and salt water. Again, use your Super Sting manual for specific instructions on how to run the test. We typically use the Winner Schlumberger test for our purposes. This test runs approximately 100 minutes, but can be faster depending on how quickly the electrical current passes into the earth. Someone should be monitoring the test during this time to make sure it doesn't encounter any errors. These errors can include a full memory or low battery voltage. Data can be collected directly from the Super Sting or downloaded at a later date. If you are running multiple tests in a day, downloading data on site can ensure the memory won't fill up and you can have a quick look at your data. So how does it work? Electrical current is injected to the earth by a pair of electrodes, we call them current electrodes, and the voltage difference is measured by another pair of electrodes, we call them potential electrodes. This process works like injecting and pumping using a set of two wells. Knowing how much current was injected and the voltage, we can calculate the material resistance using a basic Ohm's law. These measured resistivity points go through an inversion process to obtain the resistivity distribution on the subsurface. There are several computer programs for the inversion, such as Res2DINF, Earth Imager, SimPeg, ResiPi, and others. Here, we see a resistivity profile from a barrier island in Rhode Island. The red color is a brackish water, the light blue is fresh water, and the light green is the mixing zone of fresh and brackish water. The dark purple layer on the top is the unsaturated zone, which is above the water table. Taking data from the same site over multiple years can give us a good idea of how the hydrology of an area can change over time. Geology of coastal aquifers is not homogeneous. Taking samples to bring to the lab and measure its hydrogeological characteristics allow us to correct what we saw from the ERT data and make assumptions about lithology. Here, we are taking samples from several locations along the South Kingstown Town Beach where we did an ERT survey. ERT surveys give us bulk resistivity. Taking samples and finding aquifer properties can correct our image to fluid resistivity. These samples are taken into the lab, measured in columns with some sort of bucket to catch water. We pour water in the top of the sample columns until it is fully saturated and simulate its natural state as an aquifer, which would be compacted. Once in its natural state, we test for porosity, specific yield, and specific retention. As mentioned, our surveys measure bulk resistivity. If we have a well in the survey location, we can get what is called ground control, which validates our ERT data with point data of the water level and electrical conductivity from a well. 
Using an EC meter, we monitor a well every half meter, collecting electrical conductivity and temperature. This is typically done every two weeks and gives us a baseline of the water table to compare to. Now that you're ready, good luck and we hope you enjoy the fieldwork.